In today's machine learning class, we will see two simple topics from third unit. First one is brute force Bayesian algorithm and second one is concept of consistent learners. Before that, let us see what is Bayes theorem. Bayes theorem, this is the formula for Bayes theorem, right? So this is the method of calculating hypothesis probability based on its prior probability, okay? Calculating the hypothesis of probability based on its prior probability. That is, the probability of observing specific data given the hypothesis and seeing the data itself. Okay, in the last class itself, we have seen the Bayesian algorithm with example. And also, we have seen the maximum uh, a posteriori hypothesis, that is MAP hypothesis. MAP means maximum a posteriori hypothesis. Okay, this output is used to, to design a simple learning algorithm. This algorithm is called as brute force MAP learning algorithm. MAP means maximum a posteriori hypothesis. Okay, so the HMAP formula is this one. So these are the things we have seen in the last class. And now, how this output of HMAP is used to, to design the brute force map learning algorithm. Let us assume the learner consider a finite hypothesis space in which the learner will try to learn some target concept. Okay, so this is hypothesis space capital H, right? So here the learner try to learn some target concept. Okay, so C is nothing but target concept. Here X in place 0 or 1 okay that is if L x belongs to this hypothesis base then this is 1 and if it is outside then this is 0 okay where x is the instant space corresponding to h okay so if x is belongs to capital h then the value will be 1 otherwise it will be 0 now the sequence of training example is the sequence of training example is x1 comma t1 x2 comma t2 etc up to xm comma tm okay here this small x is instance of x okay and the t1 is nothing but the target concept target concept with respect to this x1 okay so this is T1 which is equal to C of Xi. That is uh, Ti which is equal to C of Xi. Okay, what is Ti? Ti is nothing but target concept. This particular target concept with respect to this X1. X1 is nothing but the instance. Instance. If this instance belongs to capital H, okay, then the value will be 1. Let us assume that the sequence of instance of x which is equal to x1 to xm which is fixed. Okay. So this is hypothesis space. So in this hypothesis space, the instance with respect to this capital H is x1 to xm which is fixed one. And the sequence of target values. Target value is t1 to tm. Okay. And calculate the posterior probability of each hypothesis H in capital H. So, each H in capital H, we need to compute the uh, probability, that is posterior probability, in which, which uh, the highest value, the highest value of this capital H is nothing but ma maximum a posteriori hypothesis. Maximum a posteriori. Okay. So, the highest posterior probability is H map, which is equal to arg max H belong to capital H, probability of H gives T. This probability of H gives T. Which particular H value, hypothesis value is maximum? This is called as maximum posterior hypothesis. Calculating the posterior probability of each hypothesis requires a high volume of computation, high volume of computation. For example, if the hypothesis space capital H is very high, then we need to compute uh, the posterior probability of all the hypothesis. Then 
the computation volume will be very high right next the post that is the probability distribution of p of h and p of t gives h this one p of h and p of d gives h this is the prior probability that is to drive the prior knowledge of learning task we need to compute these things so to achieve the posterior probability we need to do some assumptions first one is the training data or target sequence t is noise free that is error free all the training data capital t should be error free okay that is the direct function of x only see this one that means x always equal to 1 x always equal to 1 so x always should be belongs to inside the capital h only this hypothesis space only okay then x value will be always 1 not equal to 0 and the concept c the concept c lies within the hypothesis space inside the hypothesis space okay and each hypothesis is equally probable and independent of each other so these three things are important assumptions so that we can easily uh, compute the maximum hypothesis space maximum a posteriori hypothesis on the basis of assumption 3 each hypothesis h within the space capital h is equal prior probability <coughs> that means each hypothesis is equally probable and independent of each other okay that means in the hypothesis space capital h each hypothesis is equal prior probability and when come to assumption 2 the concept c lies within the hypothesis space h this is the concept 2 isn't it so the prior probability sum up to 1 sum up to 1 Okay, for example, suppose if we are having uh, capital H equal to 2, then 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2, which is equal to 1, which is equal to 1. Okay, so the prior probability sum up to 1. For example, suppose if we are having 5 instance, then 1 by 5 plus 1 by 5 plus 1 by 5 plus 1 by 5 plus 1 by 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is equal to 1. Right? So, P of H equal to 1 by capital H for all H within H. Okay. Next, P of T gives H. This one. P of T gives H is the probability of observing target value Ti in fixed set of instance X1 to Xm in the space. Already we know that all instance should lies only in the hypothesis space where H holds true and describes the concept C correctly. Okay, that means C of X1 which is equal to T1, which is equal to T1 and this should always be correct. Correct means capital 1 that should belongs to this hypothesis space that should belongs to hypothesis space so this always be true the value will be 1 and next we come to assumption 1 assumption 1 is the target data or target sequence t is noise free okay and is direct function of x capital x that is ti which is equal to concept of target concept of xi okay this is the assumption 1 assumption 1 is the training data is error free data if t is consistent with h if t is consistent with h then the probability of data t given the hypothesis is 1 and is 0 otherwise that is if t is consistent then h is 1 if it is inconsistent then h value is 0 that is the probability of t gives h which is equal to 1 if ti which is equal to h of xi for all ti within t okay for all ti that is training data all the training data is correct then 
the p of t gives h which is equal to 1. Otherwise, 0. If it is not, then the t value will become, then this value will become 0. Now, let us try to substitute all the computed values into the base theorem. Okay. By using base theorem to identify the posterior probability when h is consistent, sorry, when h is inconsistent. Inconsistent means the h value will become 0. That is, this value will become 0 if it is inconsistent. Okay, P of H gives T which is equal to 0 into P of H. So, 0 into anything will always be 0. Then the value will be 0. P of H gives T which is equal to 0. And when H is consistent, when H is consistent with the capital T, then this value will become 1. So, this will become 1. And P of H, we already computed that all the hypothesis is having equal prior probability. That is 1 by capital H. Isn't it? Okay, 1 into anything will be the same value. So, 1 by determinant of H, P of T. Okay, P of H gives T which is equal to 1 by determinant of h p of t okay so this is the consistent h value and now we will define the subset of hypothesis h that is if it is uh, the one whole hypothesis space then we will take only the subset that is HD. The size of subset is equal to D. Which is consistent with the capital T. T is nothing but the training data which is always correct. The other free data. Okay. So P of T which is equal to. So this P of T is equal to this one. This one. Okay. With respect to HD. So we are going to complete only this hypothesis set. Okay, now we substitute both consistent and inconsistent data. If it is consistent, this value. If it is inconsistent, then this value. So, if HI belongs to HD, then this is consistent. If it is not belongs to this D, if it is outside here or here, then this is inconsistent. The value will become 0. So, 0 into anything will be 0. So, we can remove those things. So, the sum of all HD belongs to capital H. So, this one. Okay. So far we have computed P of T which is equal to HD by H and P of H equal to 1 by H and P of T gives H equal to 1 if it is consistent. This is 0 if it is non-consistent inconsistent okay so we try to substitute these values with the base theorem then p of h gives t equal to 1 by h into hd divided by h it is 1 by h why because p of h equal to 1 by h that 1 by h will come here 1 1 into 1 is equal to 1 only okay so h this h will be cancelled then this value equal to 1 by hd okay so p of h equal to 1 by hd if h is consistent with d if it is 0 otherwise that is if h is inconsistent then this value will become 0 then the entire p of h gives t is 0 And next let us see the concept of consistent learners. Okay. So the group of learners commit zero error training data. Zero error training data. That is all the training data is correct data and all are consistent. Which is equal to 1. And the output hypothesis is called as consistent learners. Right. So if the training data is consistent then 
the learner is called as consistent learner. If the training data is noise free and deterministic, okay, and if there is uniform prior probability distribution over H, then every consistent learner output the HMAP hypothesis. HMAP hypothesis. So far we have seen the brute force Bayesian algorithm and the concept of consistent learners from third unit Bayesian concept learning. In the next class we will see base optimal classifier which is one of the important topic from Bayesian concept learning. Thank you.